Today in AAH, I am always one to complain about Black History Month being subjected to just one month. Instead of complaining, I decided to make a small change. This is for my little brothers, my little sisters, all across the globe, and especially for my future babies. So come with me, learn with me, read with me. Every week I will be reading an excerpt from Today in African American History, 366 Days of Historical Events and Accomplishments, and I am excited. Black History, baby. Today in AAH, today in African American history. So let's continue on with week three, which begins with January 27th. So here we go. On this day in history, January 27th, 1961, following the successful Russian satellite launch, there was pressure on America to send their own into space. Three brilliant African-American women at NASA, Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson served as the brains behind one of the greatest operations in history, the launch of astronaut John Glenn into orbit. A stunning achievement that restored the nation's confidence, turned around the space race, and galvanized the world. The motion picture Hidden Figures was released in 2016 to tell their story. It received positive reviews from critics and grossed $236 million worldwide. In 1971, Alan Cedric Page became the first defensive player in the history of the NFL to receive the Most Valuable Player Award, known as the NFL's Marathon Man. He was the first active NFL, NFL player to complete a full 26.2 mile marathon. In his 15 seasons with the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears, he never missed a game. Page is a member of both the College Football Hall of Fame, 1993, and the Pro Football Hall of Fame, 1988. Considered one of the greatest defensive linemen ever to play the game, Page also served as an Associate Justice of the Minnesota Supreme Court. On January 28th, 1937, jazz legend Billy Lady Day Holiday teamed up with the Artie Shaw Band and toured the country. This was the first time an African-American woman and the Caucasian band shared the same stage. Jazz saxophonist Lester Young nicknamed her Lady Day. She assumed the name Billy from the movie star Billy Dove. In 2018, singer and dancer Tina Turner received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Turner is one of the world's best-selling recording artists of all time. She has been referred to as the queen of rock and roll. Her combined album and single sales total approximately 200 million copies worldwide. She is noted for her energetic stage presence, powerful vocals, and career longevity. According to Guinness Book of World Records, Turner has sold more concert tickets than any other solo performer in history. January 29th, 1926, attorney Violet Neatley Anderson became the first African-American woman to practice law before the U.S. Supreme Court. In 1993, critically acclaimed author and professor emeritus at Princeton University, Toni Morrison became the first African American to win a Nobel Prize in Literature. Morrison also won the Pulitzer Prize and the American Book Award in 1988 for Beloved. On January 30th, 1844, Richard Theodore Greener became the first African American graduate of Harvard University. He then took a position as a professor at the Howard University School of Law. He later served as Dean of Howard Law School from 1878 to 1880. In 1898, Greener was appointed by President William McKinney as General Counsel at Bombay, India. Three years later, he accepted a post in Russia. He successfully served as an American representative during the Russo-Japanese War. In 1977, the television series Roots became the most watched dramatic show in television history. It aired on ABC as an eight episode miniseries and 130 million viewers tuned in. Roots received 37 primetime Emmy Award nominations and won nine. It also won a Golden Globe and a Peabody Award. The series received the series received had unprecedented Nielsen ratings for the finale, which still holds a record as the third highest rated episode for any type of television series and the second most watched overall series finale in U.S. television history. 
Alex Haley was the first African-American to win a Pulitzer Prize for his book, Roots, which the television movie was based. Haley's 12-year venture to track the ancestry of his mother's family led him to Gambia, West Africa, where his fourth great-grandfather, Kunta Kinte, was born. Haley also wrote the autobiography of Malcolm X in 1964. On January 31st, 1810, the African Insurance Company was founded in Philadelphia. It became the first African-American-owned insurance company in the United States. The first president was Joseph Randolph. Uh, he established several offices in the Philadelphia area. The original purpose of the company, which stayed in business for 30 years, was to provide African-Americans with proper life insurance for final expenses. In 1988, professional football player Doug Williams became the first African-American to quarterback a Super Bowl team. Williams led the Washington Redskins to a 42-10 victory over the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 22. On February 1st, February, we made it to February, y'all. <laughs> February 1st, which is technically Black History Month, which I believe Black History Month should not be subjected to just one month. So, February 1st, 1865, attorney and abolitionist John S. Rock, associated with coining the term Black is Beautiful, became the first African-American attorney to practice law before the U.S. Supreme Court. In 1960, four African-American college students sat down at a lunch counter at Woolworths in Greensboro, North Carolina, and politely asked for service. Their request was refused. When they were asked to leave, they remained in their seats. Their passive resistance and peaceful sit-down helped to ignite a youth-led movement to challenge racial inequality throughout the South. In 2002, poet, activist, and novelist Langston Hughes was commemorated on the U.S. postage stamp. He was one of the earliest inventors of the art form called jazz poetry. He was also born on this day in 1902. February 2nd, 1989. U.S. Lieutenant Commander Evelyn Fields was nominated by President Bill Clinton and confirmed by the Senate to be promoted from captain to admiral. She became the first African-American woman to command a naval ship. In 1999, Fields was also the first African-American woman director of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. In 2009, Eric Holder became the 82nd Attorney General of the United States, serving in the administration of President Barack Obama. Holder was the first African American to hold the position of U.S. Attorney General. So we made it through the last week. We're already in February. And again, thank you for watching and listening and learning with me, African American history, baby. See you next week.